Okay, let's take a look at the birth of the Industrial Revolution of Britain. What were some of the causes of this? You're going to be asked to look at a couple of graphic organizers, and this is part and parcel of, and let me hide my big head here. This is part and parcel of the, the test review, and there's a couple of infographic um, readings that, that, that you're going to be asked to break down. I'm going to help you break down a couple of them here on this particular video that you'll be asked to probably do multiple select questions with on, on the test. So if you look at this carefully, you have a, the, um, and if we look at this carefully, you have the, the triumph of the rich middle class. Let me get rid of this. The triumph of the rich middle class. There we go. Triumph for the rich middle class, willing and able to invest in new businesses and technology. Okay. The triumph for the rich middle class, but willing to enable to visit. And then a bunch of these stream off and are causes themselves, like the colonial empire, agricultural and technology, the, the population growth, the, new, the advancements in agriculture leading to population growth, new steam and textiles, the Bank of England investing money, and so on. These are all factors that play into um, the ability of Great Britain to be able to, the ability of Great Britain to be able to, um, to be able to foster and in, in the, the Industrial Revolution being born. Um, but as we as we take a look at that, the pen is giving me so much difficulty here. Okay, there we go. Penn was giving me a lot of difficulty. As we take a look at this, you know, what what allows the Industrial Revolution to start in Great Britain? These are all factors that do. Um, so you're going to look at these and select which factors allow the great, great or the Industrial Revolution to start in Great Britain. Um, and, and again, what and then what allows it then, then from here, what allows it to spread to the rest of the world? Steamships and railroads. Steamships and railroads really tying things in together. Domestic changes in living conditions, social and family structure. The virtual explosion of new technologies, especially for the creation of research labs. These affect the spread of the Industrial Revolution across Europe. These affect the spread of the Industrial Revolution across Europe. So if you were to be given a multiple select question, you, you could you could talk about how um, you could talk about how the railroads enabled um, the railroads enabled the spread um, steamships and railroads um, were enabled the spread across Steamships and railroads enabled the spread across Europe, um, uh, enabled the spread of the Industrial Revolution across Europe. You, you know, factory owners building their own transportation and factory owners looking at, you know, developing transportation. We could say the factory owners, the rich and middle class willing and able to invest. Look at the arrows down. We could assume that they, you know, develop their own transportation. And then, of course, you know, that easy access to natural resources is another major factor. Um, they had good waterways and, and trade position, large deposits of coal and iron here in a different color. You've got the, you've got the good access to natural resources. So these are all factors that allowed for the industrial revolution to spawn in Great Britain and then enabled it to spread as you see coming down here to the rest of the world. So that's, it's, it's a two pronged, um, it's a two pronged graph here. It's a two pronged chart here. Next, if you're looking at a question, is that can you decide um, as we as we move on to the next question here? This one asks us about to look at some some information and you see some information here. Um, and I'm going to erase these marks that were from the other ones. You see some information here that is more to do with um, and I'm going to try to get this highlighter to work, if it will.
Ah, okay, so there we go. It's more to, if you look at this, it has more to do with, look at the, the mean height of English soldiers going down from 1730 to 1850, going down. And then you see how the number of yards of linen has increased, obviously, because of the manufacturing of, of, of goods, um, the manufacturing of, of textile factories increasing. And then you see how selected industrial cities and look at their, their increase in the 19th century, their increase in population. Okay. And then the last year to look at is the, the mean, the, the, the adult height, the average adult male height and how the shorter someone is, the, the more likely they were to have child malnutrition. And, and this is centimeters, of course, metric system. So the shorter someone is, if you look at this chart, the more likely that they're able to have child malnutrition. They're more likely to be affected by child malnutrition. So, you know, what, what, can, you, what can you assume from these charts? Well, one, look at, you know, the movement of people into, into the city centers, right? Where, what, what did that, what were, where, where did that stem from? It stemmed from that, right? Remember that it stemmed from that increased demand for industrial workers. And then you could say the diet of people, or you could say, well, the diet of, of people decrease the standard of living initially, initially, important to note that it's initially increasing the standard of, of living uh, for people. Eventually, the venture, remember, we learned that it increases over over time. We learned that it increases over time. So these are these are some of the things that you can make, the assumptions that you could draw from these charts, from these charts and graphs. So it's a combination of understanding the chart and the, the, the graphics and understanding the knowledge that's needed to um, based on the knowledge that we've learned about in the Industrial Revolution.